Hello everybody, Sanier, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about how the patents, how the patent situation will affect current CRISPR companies such as CRISPR Therapeutics, MDLA, Caribou Biosciences, and so on. Now, before we jump into today's video, you guys know the drill. Like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button. That's how we play the YouTube algorithms. You guys already know that by now. If you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Okay, so there is this article here for journalist statements and background on CRISPR patent process from the Broad Institute. And shout out to CRISPR Tommy, obviously the OG of YouTubers when it comes to CRISPR. Uh, he actually made a video on this article, goes over it a little bit. And I just, you know, I didn't really want to go over this article for this video. What I did want to do, though, what I did want to do is just comment on how CRISPR companies will will basically fare up based on the latest decision from the courts here favoring the Broad Institute, right? So just as a reminder, there's the Broad Institute and then there's basically Jennifer Doudna and her team, right? So the Broad Institute is basically, you know, Dr. Liu, Dr. Zhang, all that, those guys on the East Coast. And then you have on the West Coast, you have Jennifer Doudna, and then you have, you know, University of Berkeley and so on, right? So the, the idea that this decision will somehow eradicate CRISPR therapeutics and NTLA I think it's just preposterous. I think it's just crazy. I think it's just a wild, wild, wild statement, right? It's a really hot take. And I would argue that I would argue that this is being juiced by legacy media, right? Because they need something to juice on. And obviously, when you talk about patents, you talk about law, you talk about processes, it's always, you know, it's always a tricky topic. And it's it's not black and white, first of all. And second of all, it's not binary, right? It's not like just because the broader one, this, this side of things, right? The second interference, basically, that means that, you know, the broad is now going forward with this. And then this is, this is it for University of Berkeley. They cannot go forward with this. First of all, first of all, uh, there's going to be another appeal, right? We saw that from NTLA CEO statement just a few days before this, uh, this hearing here in February 28th. A few days before that, you know, the CEO actually mentioned that in an interview that there's going to be an appeal uh, on the worst case decision, which is basically what we're seeing here for NTLA, right? The worst case decision is the broader institute wins um, and wins the, wins wins it, right? The court's favorite. Now, the the argument I've made actually in previous videos, and if you guys you know follow me for a while, you guys know that I think this is gonna go for another few years, right? This is gonna go another few years. Few years. There's gonna be one, two, three more appeals, and you know the. I actually think this is going to go for a few few more years. This is my like my my base my base thesis, right? Uh, my worst case scenario, my worst case scenario is actually that NTLA, CRISPR Therapeutics, and the whole team over there on their on the West Coast, their University of uh, California, and so on, they actually partner up with LeBroad, right? And actually, if you take a look at the statement here. Uh, the broad actually said that for eight years they have pressed for a joint licensing strategy patent pool for more than eight years, right? So this was, this, they've actually started their introduction with that statement, right? Which leads me to believe I think there's going to be an agreement in the worst case scenario. Now you may wonder why hasn't this agreement been made? Well, if you actually read the book from um, from uh, Walter Isaacson, you'll see that Jennifer Doudna and her team and the whole side. They're at University of Berkeley and so on. They're actually really, they have actually a grudge against the, the East Coast, you know, the Broad Institute, MIT, and so on. Because I think the East Coast, they're the Broad Institute, MIT, they've always had this this um, this dominance over biotech, right? Forget about CRISPR, just biotech as a general. And I think what Jennifer Downa and the team here at uh, Berkeley, what they taught is they wanted to change that with CRISPR, right? They, they, they didn't want to, let these the VCs and the early investors from the East Coast uh, have all the, the the wins when it comes to CRISPR. And I think this is a battle they're willing to take, right? They're willing to take for another few years. And don't forget, these are a lot, of, this is a lot of money that's going to be 
poured in for lawyers, for courts, and so on. I mean, that's the whole jargon there. It's just going to, you know, deplete them with, with, with cost, right? But, you know, Jennifer Downa, Emmanuel Charpentier, the whole team there, they're willing to take this this battle um, to the next level. And that's exactly what they've been doing the last few years. And this decision, all it tells me is that it's going to take another few more years because we haven't seen any official press release from any of the individuals that I just mentioned, uh, stating that they will, uh, in fact, collaborate finally and joint um a joint strategy with Broad Institute. Instead, you know, they've been silent and I think this is, they're just working on an appeal that's going to go for a few more years. And like I mentioned, you know, they, I think this this battle is a battle that they're they're really betting on because, you know, gone are the days as VCs and early investors, you know, pump and bump, dump um, the East Coast companies, biotech companies specifically. And I think, you know, University of California, Berkeley and so on, they're trying, they're trying to change that um, and it's, I'll be, you know, I'll, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. You know, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm really curious to see if this is going to be something that, you know, the West Coast here will eventually win. I mean, biotech has always been about MIT, Harvard, you know, Broad Institute and CRISPR, you know, they, they Jennifer Down and the whole team, they're really, like I said, they're, they're really trying to change that narrative, right? And it starts by actually owning patents, right? And clearly here, they're not winning it, the battle right now. So far, as of 20, February 28th, they've lost the battle. But again, they're just going to set another appeal. This is going to go for a few, me few more years. You know, by end of this year, we'll have the FDA approval process be put by CTX001 from CRISPR Therapeutics and Vertex. And then potentially next year, we may see something from NTLA for NTLA 2001, especially with the data we just saw. So by the time that, you know, they actually go and join strategy or, you know, they no longer publish an appeal, basically, by that time, they will have potentially a few more commercial drugs here and there and more partnerships. So to me, this is just, you know, I, I think it's a non-story. I think that these companies are here to stay. I think this is just legacy media trying to juice it, or juice it up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Let me know if you think I'm way off or let me know if you think I'm on the ball. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you found value. Subscribe if you've not. And I will see you guys over the weekend. We have great things coming for you in the, these videos. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys later. Thank you.